So I have a Unify 48 port 750 watt PoE switch we're gonna review today. I also have a Unify 48 port standard switch, and I brought that one up here because kind of comparison, uh, so you realize just how much bigger it is. It's not just PoE, it's bigger to accommodate for the PoE. So it's not just the same chassis, although the front appears to be pretty much identical on both of them. Uh, so this is the 48 port, like I said, reviewed it before, Love these switches, uh, the 2448, the whole line of Ubiquiti switches, we've been really, really happy with. The Unify line of them specifically is what I'm talking about. Now, I know some of you are always asking, you know, do I go with the Edge or do I go with the Unify? It, there is different use case scenarios and you can do some comparison on them. Uh, but these, the current versions of these are not Layer 2 switches. The Edge ones do support Layer 2 functionality. There is a beta coming out I've seen on their store. I don't know much about it, but it's supposedly going to add some more functionality to these. That's not these ones. These are just your Unify uh, 48 and Unify 48 750 watt PoE. Now these come in 750 watt and 500 watt models. And we're gonna start the comparison of just how much bigger they are. Now they both still come with, you know, 48 gigabit ports, two SFP and two SFP plus ports on them. So that's still, when you're looking at them right on top of each other, that part's identical in terms of that as far as all the ports they have. So that makes them identical, but where they're very different is the size of them. And you can look up the dimensions, but yeah, it stands quite a bit taller, so you get a lot more depth. So make sure when you, if you're getting these that you have a rack that has the depth to support the taller switch. Now, the ears on here are uh, made on versus these come with ears with the standard 48, but they come in a bag and you just screw them on there so they're not like on there when you pull them out of the box. Uh, they come with some hardware, they come with some they come with the rack nut hardware, they come with a power cord, and that's about it. Uh, not a lot of other stuff in the box. So switch, power cord, mounting screw, couple cage nuts, and a quick setup guide. So I'm gonna get these boxes out of the way. Now the first thing to note here, this thing's heavy, like it weighs quite a bit. And uh, we're gonna, before we play with the software and show you how the PoE works on it, I'm gonna open it up and show you what's inside. Now the first thing I'll note, there's a lot more screws in this than there was in the other one, probably because it's bigger, heavier, and to make it really solid. But like the other switches, they are have a metal case, not plastic. And like I said, this thing's heavy and very, very solid. I'm gonna pull off the cover here. Now the fans, if you didn't notice, were on the sides as opposed to the exhaust fans that are out the back of the other switch. And uh, this is a little peek inside here. So we'll flip it up real quick and then we'll go to the overhead. So you can see it's pretty heavy duty. You got the fans on the side, fans on the side here. Console on the back, just like the other switches have. So pretty much that's the same. Like I said, the front panel is the same. But when you're looking inside, you notice know that this power supply is really solid looking. I mean, uh, nice big capacitors, nice little uh, spacers here, and piece of plastic to keep you from touching it with metal objects like I'm doing now. Uh, really heavy gauged, well routed cabling. It looks really nice inside. And I like this when I'm looking at these and I don't see stuff that's all kind of, eh, you know, done poorly. This has the little, I'm gonna see if I can pick this up a little. Is it glued? Yes, it's got sticky. I don't wanna pull the sticky off because it's uh, got the capacitors in there. But they got the anti-vibration. It's kind of hard to see, but it's the goop that you put in there to keep everything solid. It's around all the coils here, which these are coils to help condition a power. So this is, like I said, everything inside of it looks really, really well made. You got some very large heat sinks here and uh, to help dissipate the heat on the processors on it and then the four fans. The nice thing is because the fans are not soldered, uh, they're easily removable and I think that's really nice. It looks like you could actually add more fans if you wanted to. I don't know if these are actually powered, uh, but they do have the connectors on there. So being that they're pretty standardized fans, uh, easy to replace if you ever had to do that. You know, sometimes, you, you know, expected these are gonna be running for a long time in a high-end environment, so you're gonna end up with maybe a fan failure. Does happen from time to time. And the airflow is from this side to this side. So just to keep that in mind, if you are putting it something, uh, you don't wanna block these uh, fans. So the airflow is going from this way to this way. And it also has this, uh, essentially, I'm going to call it a plastic plenum here. So this back fan cools the power supply, and this fans cool the boards itself and all the other parts. 
pretty nice design. I'm not going to take it any further apart. I don't really want to. I just want to kind of see how they designed it and see how they look inside. But everything looks great. Like I said, the, the, it's all very solid. The modular of these fans not being soldered on, that's that's something I'm going to give them a lot of points for because that that's a huge issue if you've ever had to go in there and then splice. You're like, yeah, the fan's going bad and i got to slice it. They can just uh, order one of these and sometimes they could probably even find it with that same connector on there. Probably wouldn't be too hard to do. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on now that we gotta look inside and we'll get to the important part is how's the software work on it and how, uh, how the device actually functions. And this is pretty cool because I really like the way the Unify handles this. So the switch is powered up. We got a few devices plugged in. Uh, for those of you who follow the channel, these are the mesh devices that I'm going to do a video on soon. Uh, but we plug these in so we have something to power on here. I grabbed a camera because there's a bunch of cameras gonna be plugged into this uh, so we can do some testing. Now, once the switch is plugged in, you go through the usual adoption that you do for Unify and it goes into the dashboard. Uh, it is the same as the other switch I've reviewed, so we're gonna go run over the features that it has. Uh, but for the most part, if, you, if, already, if you're wondering what features it has, it's all the same as the standard Unify switch, except it has PoE as well. So let's jump into how this works and some of the details. So we have a little test network set up and uh, I'm logged into the Unify software. And I'm also gonna leave this link in here as well. Unify, understanding PoE, how Unify devices are powered. Because people always ask me some assortment of combinations of things that you can plug in. Unify has answered that question with a handy dandy chart and tells you what you can power with what. By the way, this USA uh, 487, I'm sorry, US 48750 watt. It powers all the things. So this is gonna be updated as more devices get released from Unify, so this link should always be relevant. They, they have updated a couple times to add the list of the devices on there, and it talks about the different models it supports. So this USA 48750 supports passive 24, it supports 8023AF and 802, 802.3 AT. So all of those are on here. So that's all the support that this thing offers. All right, now let's actually look at the software and look at the adoption and show you how the ports work. So I'm gonna take this and I kind of like popping it out of the little thing so it's undocked. And I'm actually starting right here on port five. So it just like the other Unify, you have your ports and it shows uh, what's connected, what's connected. Here's a little table of contents, your one gig versus your you know SCP, MIR, uh, 24, four, 24 volt PoE or PoE plus. Now I looked at this one first because this is where the camera is plugged in. And the camera does not work on the standard PoE. You have to turn the cameras onto 24 volt passive. So if you ran out and bought this switch and you ran out and got cameras and then you Google searched and you came to this video, this is how you're gonna get the camera to work is setting each port that a camera's plugged into 24 volt passive. Um, I'm not gonna get into every detail of why that works and the history of the entire problems with compatibility, but for the most part, this is the easy way to do it. Turn it on 24 volt passive and you can do that. Now you can disable PoE on a per port basis as well, just so you know. So let's go back over here and we're gonna go back over to the port list again. So let's go back to the ports. Let me actually cancel, so I close this and get to the list again. And you can see how it understands which wattage is being used. So. As long as it's not on a passive mode, you can understand the wattage. When it's just on passive, it just says send 24 volts there, don't negotiate. Uh, that's why it doesn't show there. Now, Unify does have, and I'll cover this real quick, an adapter that you can plug in so you don't need to do that. And depending on where you got the cameras, they come with the converter, so it doesn't have to be on passive. So I showed you how to plug it in. If you have the cameras and you don't have these little handy adapters, and these are the uh, AF to uh, passive adapters. I uh, forget the exact name of them. I'll put them in. I'll put them in a link below. Actually, I should just read it off here. This is the 3AF plus G I, INS 3AF plus G adapter. I'll put a link below. But uh, we ordered the cameras that have these in here, so you don't need to do it. Um, that's how we got these ones. And if we plug the adapter in. Here, moving over to port seven. And a few seconds, port seven will light up and we'll, and you'll be able to see with this adapter, 
how that works. So if you don't have the adapter, you can just set this switch because it supports passive mode. You can put it in there and you can power these cameras or other devices that support 24 volt passive mode. Please note when you do enable that passive mode, it does warn you that the device needs to support it because it's just going to send 24 volts to it. So if you aren't sure uh, and you're not using this particular unified camera or one of the ones in that list uh, that I have a link for in the description below, make sure it supports that. Whatever device you're hooking into, you don't want to damage either the switch or the device, you know, incompatible problems. All right, so the switch uh, is all set here and now we can, after a few seconds, this will refresh and that camera will come on and we'll be able to see that. I've also have the switch running because I want you to understand how loud it is. Uh, these switches, reasonably quiet. Um, it's not, I've heard some of them that are just really loud and I imagine uh, most of these fans are thermally controlled so they're probably gonna get louder if it was in a really hot server room. Hopefully your equipment's not in a hot server room. Uh, but obviously you can hear me talking over it and maybe hear the slight background noise. I'm not doing any noise cancellation here. Uh, this will be straight out of the microphone, no post-processing. So whatever ambient noise it makes, you can hear. All right, so now it's in uh, passive mode here. And you can see the camera working with the adapter without me having to change the settings. So port five, passive mode, port seven, go ahead and edit the port. And you can see it's just in standard PoE plus. Scroll down and cancel and close that. Now, the other cool thing I was, is how it measures the wattage. So, uh, by the way, if you're wondering why it's orange, that's because these cameras do only connect at 100. They, don't, they are not gigabit. And these are green because they're connected at gigabit, but the plus in the middle lets you know that they're powered uh, from PoE. So the camera just sitting here doing nothing is at 2.85 watts. Now, we're gonna take the camera and face it straight down. And what that's gonna do is turn on the lights for night vision. And in a few seconds, it's gonna refresh again and it's gonna tell you how many watts this camera is using in night vision. And the same thing goes for the other devices here. A lot of, some of the Unifies have options of power options to turn down how much uh, the Wi-Fi signal strength. And they'll also are adaptive to try to, uh, depending on the settings you have on there, to you know, try to get more range or more reach out of them. So that is another thing that will occur. And you can watch the wattage. It takes, uh, I'm doing all this in real time without editing out. So I'm gonna guess it takes about every two minutes before it updates, which is pretty slick though. Now, if you wanna restart any of the devices, um, you can go right here and I'm gonna mouse over it. You can just restart. And I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this one in port one. You want to re power cycle on port one? Yep. And I can just easily do it. I, I really love the Unify interface. I find it very intuitive, very easy to use, especially because you're dealing with some really good, fairly enterprise equipment here uh, that I can click with a mouse. And I, as much as I like, you know, the old school uh, Cisco enabling switches from the command line and uh, going in through a terminal, I got to admit, this is pretty nice. And it's pretty easy to manage and kind of get a good visual of what's going on. So I power cycle port one. And now we're seeing that it's out. And when it reboots, it'll come back online. It goes from black after it powers off for a second and comes back on and we'll see it light back up. And we see our Unify over here on port seven is now using four watts of power versus the 2.8 it was using. And that variation is because of course, now that the lights are on because the camera's facing straight down. So it thinks it's in the dark. Put it back like this. And then the camera actually, you'll, you can actually hear the lights turning on and off on it. It kind of makes a slight click noise when it sees all the lights. So that'll go back down. And we can see this is now up there. Now this is also when it first boots, it uses a lot more wattage and then it settles down uh, once it's done booting and uses less watts. Probably part of the control system in it. Um, other than that, you have all your standard advanced features that you have for a switch. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and look at the profile override. So you can just turn PoE off for one. Uh, you can do mirroring, you can aggregate, uh, you can control the link negotiation, you can do port isolation on here, uh, storm control, multicast, broadcast, and do some limitations on there. You can enable topology change notification. Now that's something kind of slick. This is notification based on if things change on the typology. Um, assuming the change is gonna be, for example, if someone unplugs something or changes something. Uh, one of the nice things I really enjoy about Unify, I'm gonna go over here to map and topology map. 
And these are the meshes, like I said, we're using them for another project. It tells you what ports they're plugged into. Like here's our UVC plugged into port number seven. This one we called Marvin's car because we did test it inside the car because he has a plug in his car. Uh, and then here's the mesh one and here's the office mesh because we were doing a couple hops on there. But you can see what ports are plugged into. So this makes it really easy to identify. So I know port two is uh, MESH. And this is handy if things are being done remotely, you're not on site, you're going, what is in that port? Uh, they make it really easy to go name, find all the ports, start naming the ports and start naming each camera. So you have a good idea and you can get a whole flow through like this camera is plugged into this port. So if you ever have to restart one of them, it's really easy just to pull it up, go to the map and away you go. Speaking of that, so from here, we're gonna go back over to the devices and we'll take a look at this device here and this is something I really like. So if you go to the details of the device, uplink wired, 48 port PoE, port three. You can click that and takes you right to port three. So this gives you a nice follow through and we can then actually go through labels. So let me kind of walk you through that again, how that worked. So we're gonna close each of these little pop-ups that came up. So we'll take the one that's called in Marvin's car We'll look at where it's uplinked and we know it's on port three. So we click on it and it opens up the switch right to port three. Then we can actually click and edit and we can give that name Marvin's car mesh. And hit apply. So now we know what's in there instead of it being called port one, port two, Marvin's car mesh. And this is just great. So we already know that this is the camera um, and we can do the same thing here. We can name it and we'll say this is uh, on the table. So when you're going through, it makes it really easy for all the unified devices, especially to go through, label them, know what's plugged into each one and manage that. That way, if someone says, hey, the, the Wi-Fi at the front of the building is having trouble, you can go to the Wi-Fi at the front of the building on the port list and power cycle it and away you go. So this really, the way Unify works with all this makes it very simple and fluid uh, from a management standpoint. And of course, with the Unify software, you can run your own controller so you can manage this from your office. So you can go from a client call, clients anywhere in the world, they're connected via the internet. Your controller has control of it. You can see the devices, see the connections, see that someone unplugged something or left something plugged in and start troubleshooting very, very fast. This is one of the reasons we love deploying Unifies for a lot of our clients because we can instantly get a visual map if we understand what they tell us is not working. Like it usually starts with a client call of, I can't get on something and you go, all right, let me check your Wi-Fi real quick. And you say, well, someone has unplugged it. You know, contractor has cut a cable. Someone just pulled the cable out or knocked something over. Uh, this allows you to get to that really quickly and kind of get a great visual of it. Uh, config wise, pretty straightforward. You can name it. I called it 48 port PoE, but you can really call it whatever you want. When we deploy these to clients, we have a client that we deployed several of these throughout their building. So we named each closet has a name and we gave it the name that follows uh, that naming scheme. So you can also get a real easy idea of how to get to it. And of course you can just restart it and then everything subsequently restarts that's on that as well. They restart reasonably fast. Services, uh, you can enable uh, flow control, jumbo frames, uh, set some priority. It does support the uh, spanning tree protocol and RTS, it's for RTSP and STP. If you're not familiar, that's where, and we've run into this. Uh, it's always a pain if you have a client with unmanned switches and they start plugging things in and they loop something into another switch and you create the spanning tree problem. It does have protection against that. Uh, it does support SNMP if you wanna do that. Network. The device, of course, has to have its own address, but you can override that instead of DHCP and assign it to be a static IP. Manage device itself. Uh, custom firmware upgrade, repro force a reprovisioning of the device. Like I said, it's like any other Univide uh, devices, so it all works fine there. Tools. Open terminal. This is kind of a neat feature uh, everything, for the most part, everything that Unify does also has a small uh, Linux kernel inside of it. Therefore, you're able to log into the devices and get into 
uh, the behind the scenes detail and see what's going on and start messing around with the system. Uh, this also gives you advanced options at that point where you can set the config and really start modifying things on these. If you wanna to get to real advanced stuff, we're not covering today, but yes, it does have that in there. Uh, so if you wanted to mess around and play around something real uh, quite more advanced on there and start customizing it, you can. <laughs> That's something I've uh, really liked about Unify, the fact that you can do that. And they have top built in so you can start looking at things on there. It's part of the way the customization goes. And like I said, this applies to like a lot of Unify devices, their switches as well. So pretty much uh, that's it for the switch. It's a great product. We've deployed these uh, to a few of our clients. This one's going in at that big job for those of you that follow the channel uh, that we showed. But they're a solid performer. Not that warm. Uh, it's been running for, uh, let's see, what does it say, 41 minutes that it's been running, and it's really not that warm. Uh, not very loud. It idles at 50 watts, and of course, the wattage is going to go up depending on all the devices that you have hooked up to here. Uh, but being able to see the wattage per device, really cool. Um, really a big fan of these products. Uh, they have been, like I said, absolutely excellent for us uh, from a management standpoint, uh, being able to manage clients, be able to see what's going on with them. And from a reliability standpoint, even doing the firmware upgrades remotely, I mean, I always cross my fingers when I do them, but they have gone really, really really smooth pushing firmware to clients and pushing it to their switches. Uh, knock on wood, we have not had an incident. They seem to have a very rational firmware upgrade process uh, even when you're doing it remotely. So hopefully this was helpful. And you can find direct uh, links where to purchase these uh, right in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have some feedback, leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to let YouTube know you'd like to know about new releases on videos. You can also find new releases on our website, lawrencesystems.com slash blog, where every video automatically gets posted so you can always find our videos whether YouTube notified you or not. Also, if you'd like to hire us for consulting services, go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com, fill out the contact form, tell us about the project you would like us to help you with. We work with a lot of businesses, we work with a lot of other IT people who need services done. Also, if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have right below me a Amazon store where you can check out some of the products we've reviewed and as many of them as available on Amazon. You can also check out the things we love. And that's an ever-evolving list of discount codes, offer codes, and different software and affiliates. You can find that on our website as well or just follow it in the link below right to the things we love landing page, including the hot sauces we recommend, which is always changing. All right, once again, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.